if I had a crystal ball, I would tell you interest rates will be cut. We'll be building more hotels, a lot of money. There's a lot of, there's a lot of money on the side. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today our awesome guest is Andy Ingram. He is the president and founder of the National Association of Black Hotel Owners, Operators, and Developers, better known as NABHood. He's going to come on and give us an update on things he's seeing in the industry. They've got a great conference that's coming up in the next week or so. And also just chat with us about the tourism world and how things are going there. Hey, Andy, how are you? I'm doing well, Ted. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this discussion. Yeah, obviously, man. You, you've always got things hopping. Whenever I see you at a conference or whenever I see you anywhere, things are always hopping around you. And I think that's a great thing. <laughs> well, we're in an active industry. Listen, for hotel ownership, tourism is the you know the second largest industry in the United in the United States under healthcare, number one in the world. And there's tremendous opportunities, particularly for African Americans and people of color and women in terms of hotel ownership. Yeah. Now you've been a trailblazer for opening doors for so many minorities to get into the hotel ownership world. Talk a little bit about what what drove you in that direction, Andy? Because I think people need to know that story behind what prompted you to do what you do because you are a single torchbearer out there pushing hotel ownership for us guys and we got to give you your prop. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I grew up in a tourism environment in the Caribbean, particularly the Bahamas. And what you see is just a tremendous amount of opportunity. But what you also see is a lack of diversity in terms of ownership, in terms of executive level employment. And quite frankly, I just looked at the opportunity. And I really began to think about what role we can play in an industry that has so much upside. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. People are going to travel. During COVID, people stopped. Um, wealthy people found refuge to go and buy, buy private islands and so forth. So it, for us, um, I also looked at what we were spending as African-Americans in travel. And what I realized that we owned zero um, in terms of the industry. We didn't own any airlines, no rental car companies of any any sort uh, nationally. We didn't own any hotels. And so um, a group of us, and I broke this idea with Solomon Herbert, Jay Patel, um, a group of us uh, got together in Peachtree City and we said, let's create the National Association of Black Hotel Owners. Now, quite frankly, we had a roadmap. It was called AHOA. The Indians had done it previously. Um, I tell people a, a very great statistic that in 10 years we will have, we will be the largest minority owners of rooms in this country, um, probably the next seven to 10 years. And I know, you, I know you're going to ask me why. And it's, and it's, it's a real simple concept. Um, African Americans, by large, are investors, not operators. Asian Americans are operators. So we typically buy large hotels. Um, we own and invest in large hotels. And I like to give the example of Norm Jenkins in Washington, D.C. He has an 1175 room Marriott. And right behind it, he has a courtyard and a residence inn, uh, just under 800 rooms. So think about it. That's 2,000 rooms. Uh, a typical Asian American hotel um, that they want to operate, they really try to keep it under 100 rooms. And therefore, that's about 20 hotels just in those three hotels, just in terms of room count, not units. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an interesting statistic. And I, I, I'm hoping to be around long enough to see that happen, too, in the next seven to 10 years. You will, Ted. You will. It, it, it's moving rapidly. In spite of the economy, we have we have some challenging times today. It's expensive for money. We have an election coming up. Um, interest rates are high. And so we've seen this cycle before. 
It's just, we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know when rates are going to go down. But there's a lot of money on the sideline waiting for opportunities. And by the way, travel is up. Convention business is up. You know, when you think about it, African Americans are spending $126.9 billion in travel. That's a lot of travel just for one segment. And, and, and think about it, the overall travel industry, uh, according to the American Hotel and Lodging Industry, continues to grow. Wow. That is a, that's, that's a staggering statistic for some, some folks that don't own a whole lot of hotels. That's a staggering statistic. <laughs> Well, you know, our group collectively, we have about 2,500 hotels. And you think about pioneers like Hank Thomas, who is one of only three civil rights writers that are still, still alive today, a former McDonald's owner. Um, but more importantly, he owned a couple of hotels. And I, I can't imagine at 18 years old in college, um, having the courage to go in the deep south to do freedom riding um, for the liberation of people of color. And so, you know, Hank always says to me, hey, you, you, you're doing the same thing, just in a very different role. But I always remind him there's not the physical detriment and threats that he endured. And you talk about hotel companies today who are interested in recruiting African Americans to ownership business. Yeah. Wow. That is that is uh And by yeah. the way, that's one of my heroes, Hank Thomas. Yeah. My wife well, and I spent some time with him a couple of months ago in Atlanta up in Stone Mountain and I thought I would spend maybe two or three hours. I ended up spending almost eight to ten hours just sitting there having lunch, dinner, and just enjoying his company because I knew I was in the Myths of greatness and somebody that paved the road for me. Yeah, yeah. He he actually, uh, and I want to say, I'm sure Hank Thomas probably knows Mr. Don Hubbard down in New Orleans that owns the Hubbard Mansion, uh, which is a bed and breakfast, who actually was a big part of the civil rights piece as well in Mississippi because Mr. Hubbard actually drove the station wagon that he handed over to James Cheney that took it to Mississippi, took it into Mississippi, where they obviously subsequently died. But but there's a lot of history. And I love sitting down with Mr. Hubbard all the time just to hear him tell me what was actually going on at the time and the sentiment. So I'm sure Hank ranks up there probably with Mr. Hubbard and some, some others that we don't get a chance to talk to. But for, for a minute, uh, Andy, tell me a little bit about how you feel about the progress that we're making on the ownership side for minorities. I know Marriott came out with their Building Bridges program. I know uh, Wyndham has its Bold program. I think Choice has its, its program as well. What are your thoughts on those programs? How are they doing? Are folks taking advantage of it? Chat a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Sure. The answer is yes. I'm encouraged. Um, it still needs a lot of work. I'm encouraged by the Hiltons, the Marriott's, the Choice, the IHG. And when you think about it, um, 90%, 99% of all the hotel companies are looking to integrate and bring on African-American ownerships groups to the industry. They They all have a program, they may be differ. But you know what's interesting? The guys at Choice or the guys at Marriott, while they want you to enter with their brand, they're spending a lot of time just trying to get people in the industry. If you talk to Bill Fortier at Hilton or North Silverman at a Marriott or even John Lancaster, um, you'll see the same footprint how do we get more people in the industry? And so for us, you know, the biggest impediment is access to capital. Um, our networks, uh, uh, what has made the, uh, the AHOA membership grow with the internal investments in education and contacts. And for, mo for the most part, African-Americans are still building a network where we can go and get equity internally, but more often we have to look for it externally. But I like to talk about the, the Evans Charles of the world. 
um, who just closed on a $70 million Hyatt um, uh, asset in Washington, D.C. And you think of Evans growing up in the wrong side of the town, um, coming to Napa, actually attending Temple University, reading about Don Peoples, and then coming to Napa, where he saw an article in um, Ebony Magazine and heard the barbershop. barbershop black barbershop is always a great place where you have good, lively discussion. But he heard people talking about an African-American that built a hotel in South Beach. He came to Napa. He had some money. But when he left the summit, he had all four of his partners. One partner, Paul Patel, who had attended Temple University with him, but they didn't know each other. And so part of what we've got to do is to figure out how we create the real partnerships that's going to allow us to put um, our investments together and then go out and, looking and look for uh, additional equity. Um, obviously, um, all the brands, um, well, not all, but most of the brands, particularly those brands I mentioned, the Hides of the World, the Choice, Hilton Marriott, IHG, um, Sinesta, are all trying to figure out and are doing how do we connect the dots. Some may put in sl sliver equity, some may put in key money. Um, all will connect you to other individuals, other investors, other firms that may look to get into the market. And then also, let's not forget, one of the biggest, in my opinion, opportunity for us is public-private partnerships. Uh, every time I talk with a city, whether it's Miami, Fort Lauderdale, whether it's Prince George's County, or in the case of Washington, D.C., keep in mind, Norm Jenkins could not have built that 500 and $45 million Marriott Marquis without public support, um, regentification of a neighborhood, and fulfilling the goals that's committed to hire locally and give people within that um, area, um, that community, an opportunity to improve their life with a great job that will help them feed their families and move forward. Yeah, wow. That, that is phenomenal. I know I've talked with a couple of the Marriott guys that are over their program and they seem to be encouraged by the activity that they're seeing. They seem to be encouraged by the responses of folks that are actually applying to try to get in the program. And I, and I think the last time I spoke with the Marriott folks, they were trying to actually expand the program to allow folks to actually buy existing properties and use them kind of like in a renovation type setup. I think before it was more geared toward new ground up, new construction type setups, but uh, I think they were trying to expand it to open up where you could actually go in and buy existing property, do conversions and what have you. I don't know if they've done that, do you? Yeah, listen, in, in a tight market, uh, new construction, financing new construction is always going to be challenging. So acquisitions, uh, redeploying the sort of capital that you have to take an existing hotel and reposition it, it's probably a smart choice um, by always less risk. It has track records. It has trailing financials. Um, so your financial institutions, your banks, your lending institutions will see that with some tweaking and bringing in great general managers or great third third party managers, which may also Ted help by putting some some equity in the deal. I mean, at the end of the day, the market is becoming more competitive, and I tell people this all always. Just as you search for a price for a great rate on your mortgage then you also need to find a great management company that if there is a, a piece in the capital stack that you need, there may be some opportunity for that third-party management company to play a role. And when I say third-party management company, keep in mind that, as I mentioned earlier, we are investors. So we always look for great partners in addition to the brand who can help us operate that company um, or that hotel or that asset. Yeah, the management company. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Andy, let me uh, let me take a minute to give a shout out to my sponsors so they'll keep uh, helping us put the show on. Otherwise, they'll cut us off. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> GHM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've experienced a home fire, uh, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, Recovery is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, stored in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, jewelry, etc. to settle your claims with your insurance company a lot faster. Check out the Recovered app today. Use the promo code on screen to get a 50% off and use the THM coupon. And as always, we ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us here on LinkedIn. And this episode with Andy will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And as always, we appreciate all your thoughts, comments, and feedback. All right. So, Andy, let's let's switch gears a little bit. So, we, you know, I think you mentioned about the purchasing values of African Americans in the travel industry uh, on a broad scale. What do you think the state of the hotel industry is right now, and is it coming back post COVID? You know, what do you see things right now? It's tough. Is it coming back? Absolutely. People are traveling. The, there was a lot of revenge travel, would be called, right after COVID. And you saw that both internationally as well as domestically. Now, I should pause to say that travel to the U.S. is not quite back yet. Brand USA, which just um, got a new president um, this past week or last week, um, uh, who I call them the Ministry of Tourism for the United States. Um, Brand USA is the organization that travels all over the world, encouraging people to come to the United States. The challenge we all have is the tremendous backlog of visas. People that want to come here can't get visas to travel. In addition, the backlog when they come to the U.S., if you go to Gateway Cities, Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, those lines could be extraordinary long. And so we're hoping that Congress um, take some action and give Customs and Immigration um, the sort of uh, uh, funding that they need to bring on em- more employees. And even at the State Department, we've got to do a better job and get quick turnaround times and visas at these folks that want to come and spend money. Listen, at the end of the day, the more money they bring to the United States, the more we can get our economy up and running. And keep in mind, uh, cities and states depend on bed tax to continue to fund uh, a tremendous amount of programs. And visitors spend a lot of money in restaurants and hotels, um, rental cars. And so, listen, we want to create that backlog. But tough economy, uh, high interest rates, tight money, um, uh, difficult to get new build finance, particularly for new owners without a track record. But at the same time, uh, kudos to the industry. We're surviving, hold, uh, holding our own, and we're still trying to keep opportunities for people that were typically left out um, to get into the industry. What do you think? Um, what do you think twenty twenty five looks like? You know what? I'm encouraged by 2025. I think we'll have an election over. We'll have a new term uh, of um, elected officials. Um, well, we'll they'll, then I'll get back to business for the next four years. And I think you hopefully was going to see some turnaround and reducing interest rates. Um, you're going to see a lot of money hopefully coming into the economy because people will have the sort of confidence that they can spend. I hope inflation goes down. Um, employment is at an all-time low. Um, I hope that we continue to hire people because I think it's important that we give people an opportunity um, on employing them so that they can have a, a good quality of life and be able to take care of their family and do the things that they want to do. So I'm encouraged. I think... Um, if I had a crystal ball, I would tell you 
interest rates will be cut. We'll be building more hotels, a lot of money. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of money on the sideline. And I think uh, the hotel industry, you're seeing growth, new brands. Uh, Jesus, do we need another brand? You know, hey, Marriott, Hilton probably leads the industry in branding. Um, when, you, when you look at the bowl program at Wyndham, and by the way, had the kick off our conference on Tuesday the 23rd in Miami, we start with a symposium that Wyndham is doing on um, the bowl program. Um, Jeff Bellotti, president of um, uh, Wyndham, a tremendous supporter of NABHUD. You know, his commitment is not a handout, as the hotel brands all know, but they understand that the market, the consumer, the traveler has changed. And so whether you are looking for convention business um, or individual travel, um, uh, people know that the disposable income that minorities have, particularly African-Americans, can be very useful to their bottom line. Yeah, 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 so true. So you've got the conference coming up next week. Thoughts on that? What what are your what are some of your highlights that you're looking super super forward to? You you always do so much great things at that conference. So I'm not going to even start to try to try to name them all. But what are you what are you super excited about for the conference for next week? Well, you know, uh, one of my personal highlights is a young lady called Leslie Hale. Um, last year we had Sheila Johnson, who spoke at a speaker series at Tom Baltimore speaker series. Leslie Hale, and, and, and my hat's off to her. Leslie Hale has earning calls this week. I mean, sorry, next week. And typically our speaker series is on Thursday. She wanted to be at NABHUD. And she said, Andy, if you can accommodate me, I'll come in on Wednesday afternoon and speak. Um, because she's committed a Howard graduate, the only African-American woman in the world, particularly in the U.S., that is running a real estate trust at RLJ Lodging. They've got over 150 hotels. Um, and it's a testament um, to her. Um, and I once, you know, I have I have to interview her at this session. So I'm going to have a good time just talking with her and understanding how she got there. But, you know, one of the most important aspects is our generation of new leaders. We have about 30 to 40 students from hospitality schools and HBCU schools around the country. And we have these young people that we have an opportunity to create a next generation of diverse leaders. I'm so encouraged that since we started this program, many of these kids have gone on to great careers in the hotel industry. So guys like Greg DeShields, um, Sean, Dr. Gardner, Graylin Swilly, um, Ashley um, Johnson, who all runs, our, who all in charge of the student committee, um, have done a great job in just creating a good program and a great track for these young people. But you mentioned what we're excited about. I'm excited to see so many people of color come together uh, with the hospitality industry, with our Indian partners who... Uh, and I tell people this all the time. At our town hall meeting with Ahoa on Thursday evening, we will have the, we will have the last three chairmen of Ahoa, and we'll have the next five chairmen of Ahoa all there. Where there's Raul Patel, who's the secretary, the treasurer. I'm sorry, uh, or KP um, or Mirage, who's the youngest chairman of Ahoa. All will be there, and having us come together at this venue where you'll have people of color, you'll have Indians, you'll have the hospitality industry, you'll have Hilton, you have Marriott. And I go to a lot of conferences, as you know. The diversity here, bar none, this is the only conference in America where people of color are not only present, but dominant, who are eager, eager to learn about an industry that it's untapped for us. And that's where the opportunity comes in. Yeah. Yeah. That's always su super exciting. 
great uh, energy, great atmosphere. And to your point, hats off to Leslie. She is definitely a, uh, a leader in the industry and she's done a wonderful job over at ROJ. And as well, hats off to you because like I said, you always find a way to bring in that next generation of young folks and you keep them in the mix and they're always excited about being there. So I don't know what you're doing, but the energy, the excitement that they bring to that conference is phenomenal. So I, I can only say, keep doing what you're doing. I've gotten an opportunity to speak with several of them when I've been there and they are just always so gracious and appreciative. They have the opportunity to be a part of that conference. So, uh, so we're doing something right. Hey, Ted, think about it. Our speaker on Thursday is Don Peoples. Don Peoples built the first African-American-owned hotel on South Beach. Um, when I think of Mr. Hubbard um, and I think of um, uh, segregation and I think of African-Americans traveling around the country trying to find a place that would welcome them where they feel safe you know, I take solace in that and only to understand that today uh, we can own a Marriott or Hilton and the quality of service never changes based on your sexual orientation, your color. Um, and so for us to me, here's our next step. How do we get more people of color, more black executives, more black GMs in the hotel industry? How do we get more um, young black women like Blight Pierre Louis, who works for Gen Com, the chief investment officer. Uh, they own properties in, um, they own the Ritz Carlton on Miami Beach. They own the Rose, uh, Rosewood in Bermuda, and they're building one of the largest hotels downtown Miami. And here's a woman at the top of her game. So for us, it's critical. We have three pillars at NAPA, the National Association of Black Hotel Owners, Operators, and Developers. And by the way, let me just plug us for one second. If you need to find information on us, go to www.nabhood.com. As you know, I'm a real shy guy, Ted, so I, I had to plug that. But our three pillars are ownership, executive level employment, and minority supply diversity. Um, and you think about that, and you think about Warren Thompson um, at Thompson Hospitality, who is one of our sponsors of our Minority Supplier Forum on Thursday at 350. We brought in the industry and we've said, how do we get more people to do business, to sell product and services, to the hotel industry. Ted, I remember in your time when you did construction business, you, know, you wanted to make sure that your firm had an opportunity and we worked hard to get those opportunities where people can renovate hotels, they can sell widgets. So both Hilton, Marriott, Wyndham, all the major brands, Avendra, Aramark, um, and you think about how small the dollar amount that African Americans sell goods and services. And I was talking with Hilton the other day and we had a guy, oh, kudos to Bill Fortier, who came to one of our meetings, met Bill. Met Bill. Bill passed his, num his name to, um, to the supply diversity people. And today, that young company out of Atlanta is providing employees to Hilton properties, not only in Atlanta, but now they've expanded to other cities around the country. So there's no handle in our business. There's only opportunities and that's what we look for. Yeah, yeah, nope, absolutely. I mean, we, we constantly are, you know, having conversations with the Marriott's and the Hilton folks to see how we can further, you know, engage with them and their franchisees and, and help them with, you know, renovations or major maintenance capex type projects when they need it. You know, they have to kind of walk a fine line because there's only so far they can go and say, hey, use this guy. They can only recommend or suggest talk to these guys. But it, it's a it, it's definitely a continuing uh, challenge. But you've got to always stay vigilant 
and stay on task and try to make sure you're putting the positives out there and, and get an opportunity because what we do opens the door for somebody else. You're right, Ted. And I, and I think for us, we've got to be ready for the opportunity. Um, we also have to educate our owners in terms of the power to have with an asset. I did a conference call yesterday with an owner in, um, in uh, Maryland. Um, they're getting ready to renovate one of their hotels. Um, and I put them in touch with um, the director um, from PG County. And I said, hey, there's opportunities in the private sector. You can do this where people can bring assets, cities, CRA, redevelopment money um, are also available. And so what we say to our owners all the time, you can dictate it. your asset, providing you meet all the guidelines. We have to give, we as African-American owners have to give opportunities, have to advocate for other folks that look like us so that we can spend our money with them. There's, there's absolutely no reason. And I spoke to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a good friend of yours, um, Carl Mayfield at Park. And as you know, Carl has always been a real great supporter. And I said, Carl, we've got to do better. We've got to do more. We've got to open the door. Um, and we've got to take these individual companies and just give them an opportunity. And that's all they need. And you'll see them flying just like Evans Charles and Norm Jenkins uh, when they flew away from corporate America. And you think about it, Norm Jenkins was an employee at Marriott when he got the opportunity to change that employment to ownership. So did Warren Thompson, the largest minority African-American food service country um, company in America with over a hundred restaurants and multiple jurisdictions, um, feeding many um, universities, um, a great partnership with Compass. And again, we look not to do it alone. We're always looking for great partners that are going in the same direction that we are, that we can bring value as they bring value to us. Yeah, yeah, that's so spot on. And I think, uh... I think the town of Baltimore's and the Carl Mayfields who gave us an opportunity to work with them when they were just starting and they had just the, the six Homewood Suites hotels with Bob Johnson, right? They just had six properties and then it's like overnight, they went from six hotels to like 225 and they're like, hey, we're going to need your help even more now. I'm like, okay. And, and but think, no, it, think, of where they, think of where Tom Baltimore and Carl may... Uh, may feel uh, um, are yeah. today. Yeah. Park hotels, yeah. which which yeah. absorb all of the assets from Hilton, are the second largest yeah. hotel after host in America. Ran by an African American with substantial African American leadership. You know, I, I'm always when we first started, I used to tell Tom and Warren Fields and. Norm Jenkins, when we go to these conferences, we didn't have enough people of color to get a table of 10. That's continuing to grow. We have more young women, Kendra Plummer, uh, a star um, who's looking, um, I think Kendra started with us as a student, worked for a number of major hotel companies, got it, understood it. She's now in ownership. I think she's on a third hotel and is one of our speakers at the conference. So we have, you know, and we highlight people um, of color that have achieved. We give them an opportunity so other folks can see them. Because as a young man growing up in the Bahamas, um, I always recount on my mother, um, who's not here with us today, but she, her point is she never wanted me to work in the hotel industry. And when I became an adult, I asked her why. And she said, listen, the people in the hotel industry, um, she didn't know any executives. She didn't see any executives. She didn't see any owners. And she had a bright future for me. I just wish she was here to see how we've turned the role around where we're now. Owners. So when these young people come to this co the, uh, our conference, July the 24th to the 26th, I want them to see the Leslie Hales. 
the Don Peoples, the Norm Jenkins, the Warren Thompsons, um, the Bly Pierre the Evans Charles, so they know that there's a place for them at the seat um, in the hospitality industry. And so when you talk to guys like Bill Fortier from Hilton or Nora Silverman from uh, Marriott or Paul Cash from Wyndham or John Lancaster from Choice, you know that they, they're working equally as hard to ensure that there's great diversity in ownership and supply diversity and employment. Well, Andy, you know, I could go on and on and on listening to you and and getting all those little tidbits of golden nuggets that you drop when we have a time uh, opportunity to talk. But, you know, I got to uh, I got to shut it down for a minute. But I uh, I really want to thank you for the time today. I uh, I'm looking forward to hearing great things about the conference. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure I'll see a lot of good stuff uh, coming out of that as well. But thank you for your time again today, Andy. We look forward to talking with you soon again. I appreciate it, Ted. Thanks for the opportunity. And a shout out to my team. I have an incredible team. I've got a daughter that now works with me, PJ, and a son, Shimato, um, who we're training as this next generation of leaders. But our whole team, Richie, Hassan, who also works with us part time. But we've got an incredible amount of people. But more importantly, the industry supports us. Hilton supports us. Marriott supports us. Choice supports us. And that's the beauty of being a success in this industry. We all need to work together. And if we do that, we can really create a great industry for everyone. Thanks again, Tom. Um, Ted. Enjoy. All right, sir. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Remember, follow us here on LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode with Andy will also be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, we appreciate all your thoughts and feedback. And remember, take a minute, to check out the Recover It app today. Use the 50% off promo code for protecting yourself and your family should disaster strike. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.